if you've got a shit manager guys <laughs> uh, and for example if you don't like the manager and the manager is liked by let's say for example other managers or even the director and that manager's not going nowhere no are you babe you're stuck Welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you have not been on my channel before and you're interested in the world of social work, the world of properties, mortgages, money management or anything hair and beauty, please make sure you hit that subscribe button before we get into this video. And today I'm here with a get ready with me video about, it's a video relating to social work because I get the most questions about social work. Um, so I think I should just knock all of the social work um, videos off my list because um, I know more and more is going to come and come and come. I'll just have a long list of social work requests. Um, but this is one of the most requested videos that from all of you, well, the people that do follow me or um, have sent me a message um, on my Instagram DMs. And it's, it's about being a social, uh, locum social worker, agency social worker versus being a permanent social worker. As you all know, um, well people that have watched me as you know that I have been a permanent social worker and I was a permanent social worker for three years three and a half years um, before going agency and you guys want to know what the pros and cons are of the both worlds so I'm here to give you the tea whilst getting ready as you can see my hair's this hair guys um, is by Bellissi UK I'm going to put the description right here this is straight out the wash. Um, it's gonna be a little bit complicated for me to get ready in front of the camera and straighten this hair in front of the camera, but this is literally straight out the wash. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna straighten it and do a little bit of a face whilst um, I speak to you guys about the pros and cons of being a low from social worker and the pros and cons of being a permanent social worker. So let's just get in this, let's just get into this video. So what I've done, I've drawn my brows off camera because they take me too long to do on camera. And I don't wanna do like a full face. I just wanna put a little bit of makeup on and just get on with my video and look decent at the end of this video because it just needs to happen, you know. Um, I'm gonna start with, what should I start with? This is a bit techy because my, my mirror's all the way down there. Starting um, with permanent social work. What are the pros and cons of being a permanent social worker? I would say the first pro is career progression. Um, so the fact that you're, the fact that you're um, permanent in the local authority means that they, they would like to invest in you. Um, they would like to invest in you so that they can keep you there for longer um, and it benefits the both of you so you're, they can invest in you in terms of like offering training so another pro is free training so offering you training and perhaps paying for a course that you could do that will take you to the next level in your career um, that's number one actually that's a really good one because quite a few people want to really progress in social work and just you know get to the top so yeah i guess the first two career progression and free training you know free free training free courses sometimes you even get like sponsored sorry sorry guys sometimes you even get sponsored to do like a certain course um you know that would make that would um enhance your what's the word that would enhance your cv um, but it would be for the benefit of, of the local authority that you're at because they're the ones that have invested in you um, in order for you to progress further in your career. So if you're looking for um, career progression in social work, you want to go from social work to senior social worker to manager, assistant manager to manager to um, group leader or as they are, other places call it, um, service manager. I know you want to get to talk to maybe like, you know, um, what do you call it? A director in children's services or adult services. I hope my, do you know what? If I carry on, I hope my makeup doesn't come out as a, in a, I hope it's not a shambles at the end of this because I'm kind of using my camera as well as a little bit of a, oh, it's just crazy. Anyway, third thing about being a permanent, third pro of being a permanent social worker 
is the fact that you get paid leave. You get a certain amount of annual leave that's paid. You get sick, if you're um, off sick, you also get paid. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people would like to hear that. And also, if you're on maternity, you would get your maternity pay. With certain local authorities, they expect you to stay um, in, at, they, they expect you to work for them for a certain amount of years, sometimes two years, sometimes zero, um, before you get the, the benefits of um, the benefits of maternity. Some people want you to stay for longer, um, two years, and some people, as soon as you start um, working for the local authority, you automatic you automatically get the benefits of um, maternity pay. And I'll just I don't want to make it so extensive. I'm just thinking of all the things that I kind of remember. Um, but lastly, which is something that's also very important and it's kind of inevitable in social work, but you, you get more consistency with the families that you work with. I'm sorry, I look very crazy right now, so let me get blending. So what, what I mean by consistency with families is the fact that um, you could have a case for however long um, and you have the chance to see the case through. That's something that's very positive. Um, not only for the fam, not only for you um, as a social worker, but also for the families because you know the families you know put their trust in you and everything. And, and at the end of the day, like they are looking onto you to help them, and then all of a sudden you're leaving. You know that can be very disheartening for families that have decided to work hard with you and stuff like that. Um, you know, it takes them a very long time to to get used to having a social worker sometimes, it gets them, takes them a really very long time and and then all of a sudden you're going. You know, families that really hate that, they have, they're have having new social workers, new social worker, unless they hate the social worker that they have, then that's a different story, you know? But yeah, I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna stop there with the pros. So with the cons of being a permanent social worker, the number one con, the money. The money does not justify the amount of work, the amount of pressure that you're put under. In some instances, the money is the same as someone that does a, a much less stressful job. Um, you know, it can range from starting from like 27K um, and social work roles perhaps would probably stop at like 35K. 36k in some local authorities and sometimes 37 and if you're senior 38 to maybe like 43k or 40 44k ish something along those lines um and when you're in the role you realize like you're under a lot of pressure um and you start you know you get paid and you're like what what yeah the money would be one of them another thing i'd say um is a con um, I'm just going to skip this cream um, contour today and just stick, just stick to stick to um, a powder one. It's not like I'm going anywhere anyway. I'm just trying to look decent by the end of this video. Another thing I'd say that would be a con um, about being a permanent social worker is if you've got a shit manager, guys. <laughs> uh, and for example, if you don't like the manager, and the manager is liked by, let's say, for example, other managers or even the director, and that manager's not going nowhere. <laughs> no, are you, babe. You're stuck. Well, you're not stuck, but you are going to feel stuck. You know, you're going to go to work, and you're you have to face the same manager every day. Like, as permanent, it's very difficult for you to be flexible when you're working. It's very difficult for you to say, okay, now I've had enough of this. I'm out because number one, like, you, you just feel so so secure that you feel so stuck. Um, actually, another thing that's per positive about being a permanent social worker is the security. Um, you know, you've, you've got a job, they're not gonna say up and leave now. Um, before, if you've done something wrong or whatever, you have to go through the disciplinary stages before you eventually get sacked. Eventually get sacked. Um, you're so secure that it's just much less flexible. You can't just up and leave. Um, if you don't like your manager, you have to stick it out um, and work with the manager to see how you can make things better. 
and you know and all of that stuff so with being a permanent social worker there aren't so many cons but it all depends on what you're after you know i'll explain the reason why i decided to go that decided to go agency but um i'll explain the reasons for that but when i was permanent guys i did enjoy being a permanent social worker i did feel very secure um i did feel like i really like was part of the progress of that local authority um i felt very involved i felt recognized by you know staff especially even the director actually she would email me directly she would commend me directly she would come down and speak to a manager and stuff like that you just felt very involved um so i did enjoy being a permanent social worker however it just got to the point where it just was not fulfilling its purpose anymore and i had other plans which i'll get into shortly um but just let me just stick my lashes off camera because it's going to be a bit techy <laughs> it's going to be crazy um sticking it on camera right now especially where it's not a makeup video and i'm just trying to talk and get through the video straighten my hair and all that crap so let me just take my, my lashes off camera put my lips on off camera and put a bit of blush on off camera so i'm back guys all i've done off camera is i've stuck some lashes on put some blush on and put a bit of a glow on and done my lips so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to continue to i'm going to let's start doing this hair let's just start getting this hair straight and um, even though I'm not going anywhere, obviously quarantine living, um, even though I'm not going anywhere, I still want to get this hair straightened because you know guys, when you wash hair, you kind of have to straighten it at least twice to get it back into that bone straight um, texture. So let's get into being an agency, agency social worker. I only um, converted to agency two and a half years ago. No, two years and what, three months-ish? Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I've it fulfilled its purpose. Like the reason why I went agency in the first place was because I wanted to buy a house and the um, permanent money, sorry, my lashes not even stuck on properly. The permanent money was, only t was telling me that I can only get a one bedroom house. Um, so I decided to go agency um, in order to get a property and get my property up to standards use money for some stuff that i want to use money on whilst i haven't got children i just thought it's best to go to agency now and xyz before going to agency guys i did do a lot of research i researched about um maternity leave like i calculated how much i would earn over the year um and if i was to fall pregnant how much i could save in the, in the how much i could save in those nine months of being pregnant um and then i compared it to permanent social work I calculated the whole social work leave as a permanent social work I calculated how much that would cost I've done a lot of calculations before I reached the decision before I reached the decision of becoming a, an agency social worker so although the money aspect and buying a house was there I also looked at all the other aspects before I made that decision and I'm not gonna lie it's been the best decision that I've ever made I'm not gonna lie um, it's been an excellent decision. I don't regret it for one second and to be honest, I don't see myself going back to permanent But that's another that's another conversation for another day So I'm just going with my um, Jump speeder for his ease um, I'm gonna put two squeezes <laughs> it's, not even a tutorial. it's not even a tutorial but hey, yeah in case you guys say oh what do you put on your wings? So yeah, I'll be honest about, um, I'll be very honest. You guys know I like to be very honest on my channel. I like to give you guys the real, real. So there, there are a lot of disadvantages about being an agency social worker. So as I said, it's actually based on, make the, the decision based on what you want at the time. Mine was money and the money, in my opinion, does not even compare. I don't know why, I think it's unfair. Um, but there are a lot of um, pros and there are a lot of pros and cons, you know, not like permanent social worker where there are a lot of um, pros and only quite a few cons. Agency social worker does come with quite a few cons. Um, so it's just what you're willing to tolerate. I'm gonna to start with the cons before I go in to speak about what the pros are. Um, so one of, the one of the cons of being a agency social worker is the fact that 
They expect you to hit the ground running. I don't think you understand what I mean. You are, you could go for an interview. Okay, they don't give you any time. If you, for example, send your CV to an, an agency, they could say, oh, they want to interview you tomorrow. Is that okay? And you're thinking, oh, uh, okay. You're like, okay. Like, you don't want to miss the opportunity. So you're like, okay. You're not going to be like, oh, no, can I have more time, please? Because they expect you to be very experienced already. They expect you to know your staff that they can interview you right here, right now, and you have to know all the answers and whatnot. So that's one of the cons. They expect you to hit the ground running. And as soon as you're in, you start the job, there is no baby steps, guys. There is no, oh, let her get used to the database. Oh, no, let her get used to the um, community. community. Oh, no, let her get used to... No, it's literally you're in and you've got your cases that day. Like, depending on... The, it also depends on the local authority. Some You'd be lucky if you go to a local authority that isn't very prepared to have you and they have you anyway. And then when you're in, they're taking so long to give you cases and whatnot. That's happened to me before. Um, there's been times when I've gone into a role um, and I've gone into a role and um, they have said, oh, I, we haven't sorted out your cases yet. So I haven't had cases for like a whole week, which is, and I wasn't complaining. Some people be like, oh, I'm bored. Oh, no way. I was not going to complain at all. I was enjoying it. Um, I was enjoying the freedom I had because I knew when they're ready for me, they're ready for me. That's just it. Oh, so I, do, I don't know whether to do middle part or side part today. What do you think, guys? Not that you're going to answer me, but you know. Yeah, so they expect you to hit the ground running. They expect you to learn quickly. They expect you to adapt quickly. Um, they expect you to develop professional relationships quickly. They expect you to go boom, boom, bam, come in, work on those cases, get everything moving. Um, that's what they want to see. That's what they're paying you for. Um, a manager could say, the manager, your manager could be like, oh, Stephanie, go and do X, Y, Z, and you're like, yep, I think I'm going to do a side part, actually. But I don't know what side to go for. Guys, do you guys have a buff and butter side? This is my better side. It's my not so better side. Um, as a teenager, I was very insecure about this side of my face, but we'll leave the insecurities for another video if you guys want it. But, um, yeah, so... Let's just embrace this side and just do this side. They expect you to literally know your stuff. And in social work, in social work, different local authorities use different databases. Um, so we have the likes of Liquid Logic, we have the likes, likes of Family Mosaic, we have the likes of Framework Eye. You know, there's all these different databases that you need to learn about. And if you don't know how to use the system, it can be a huge barrier. Um, that's probably better to be to you. It can be a huge barrier in you actually fulfilling your role in the way that you need to fulfill that role and show the managers or whoever's hired you that I've got this, you know? If you don't know, you don't really want to show that you're struggling. Um, if you're someone that builds relationship quickly, um, you would be able to speak to your colleagues um, and they'll show you. Um, and personally, I do, I actually do build relationships quite quickly. Um, so it's been, it hasn't been bad for me really. And to be fair, the local authorities that I've been to, actually the first one, I hadn't used the, um, the framework I, it was framework I, I hadn't used that, used that database before and I really hated it. But now I've got experience in two databases. Um, so now I can, yeah, so I can, uh, yeah, I've got to move two databases. And where I am at the moment, they're switching to another database that I haven't used, but, so I'm going to receive more training on that, so actually I'll be able to work anywhere, really. But yeah, that's one of the cons. They want you to boom, boom, bam. <laughs> Basically, that's a short way of putting it. They want you to hit the ground running. You can imagine if you're an agent, a uh, newly qualified social worker or, or someone that isn't very experienced in your job, they would know because they will put you under pressure and they want to see how you manage it. Um, some Don't get me wrong, some local authorities are better than others. Some of them just treat you nicely, ease you in. You know, it actually depends on the manager. But remember, you're earning 
if your manager's per if your manager's permanent, remember you're actually earning more than your manager, and certain managers really hate that. That's another con, guys. Um, earning more than your colleagues, and you're doing it, you're doing exactly the same job. That's positive for you, but um, people do feel that people actually make references to it. I've had s several references made to my pay. There was a manager, um, an assistant manager. She made reference to, oh, we're paying you too much. Oh, um, she would say stuff like, oh, the car, uh, make references to the car that I drive and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, you, these people need to remember, it's actually your choice. You can go agency if you want to go agency. Stop coming at me for doing something that you also have the right to do. Um, so that's another thing, guys. Envy. <laughs> I mean, it's great for you that, you know, you, you're in a better financial position than certain people, but you know, there's also some envy there. But some some um, some colleagues don't really mind, or well, they don't really show it anyway, because they know they have the choice, they're just not ready to do it, and they know that they have the option to take that plunge, so they don't really care. But certain people, yeah, they want to show it. Um, another con of being an agency social worker is the fact that you don't, you may have to pay for your training. Um, you don't get free training in some local authorities. Certain local authorities, they would offer you some mandatory training, but in other local authorities, you have to pay for these things. And um, some people really like training just so they can progress and learn more and, you know, just broaden their knowledge. Personally, um, career progression in social work is not my, how do I put it? I mean, I'd love to progress my, in my progress in my I'd love to progress in my um career but career progression in social work is just not my aim right now my aim right now is to get a certain amount of money and reach certain personal goals and then if I want to go permanent I can do that but that's not my aim right now and I don't I also don't see myself going permanent but hey that's another um conversation for another day another thing that is Another con about being an agency social worker, did I speak about having an unpaid leave? No, I don't think I spoke about that. Another thing about being, uh, another con about being a, an agency social worker is the fact that um, you get un, unpaid leave. So if you're on annual leave, um, if you're on annual leave, you're not getting paid for that. If it's bank holiday, you're not getting paid for that. If you're sick, you're not getting paid for that. <laughs> you're not getting paid, period. Um, but that's just it. So that and that that, bo that bothers a lot of people. Um, doesn't bother me because, like I said, guys, I did do a lot of calculations before um, deciding to go. Deciding before deciding to be a, a, an agency social worker, I've done all the calculations already. When you add the money that you get, it's still not justifiable. Um, so I still prefer to be an agency social worker. Thank the Lord for good health, you know. Um, I'm not, I don't you normally get sick, so. And I'm someone that if I was sick, I will still try to soldier on anyway. I'm not, that's not because I'm, be, I'm, I'm an agency social worker, but it's just the way I am as a person. Um, and that's even how I was when I was permanent. So yeah, that's another thing that's a con. Guys, I'm getting a little bit hot, so I'm going to finish straightening my hair. Yeah, so I was speaking about being an agency social worker and what the cons were, uh, or the cons of that decision is. Um, obviously, you've got less chance of career progression um, because the, the local authority is just using you. They're using you because they need you. They need stuff done, and so they're like, okay, let's just get someone that's agency. Agency workers are normally hard workers because they want to keep their job and whatnot. Um, but basically, yeah, that's basically the their rationale or maybe because they're not getting enough like they're not getting enough um what do you call it applications so they might think okay let's get an agency to work in and blah 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 don't get me wrong some local authority in some local authorities and if they like you and you're a hard worker they'll try to persuade you to go permanent first of all and if that's not the case um you might end up having to interview for another role that's higher um in-house you know, that's still career progression in my eyes anyway. Some local authorities have those opportunities 
whereas other local authorities, it's very tight. It's very difficult for you to progress, and that's just it. Um, another thing that's probably a con for some people is the fact that you know they have high expectations of you, and I mean high. So people that so people that have asked me um, um, how long does it take for me to go um, agency or when can they go agency? Listen to everything I'm saying, and if you feel like okay, these are things that I can do, um, I feel very professionally confident that your professional confidence is on a good level. Go for it. Why not? But if I'm saying if you listen to everything I'm saying about the cons about being an agency social worker and it doesn't sit comfortably with you. Just really, really think about it because you are dealing with people's lives, guys. You are dealing with people's lives. I was actually going to put some mousse on his hair and whatnot, but guys, I'm not going anywhere, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, so any, anyway, this is, I'm just going to leave this here. This is my final look. Yeah, so this is the final look, guys. But um, I'm just, I just can't wait to get into the positives about being an agency social worker. And now the pros, shmoney, honey. So agency social workers can get basically double what their the colleague is getting, um, double of their colleague's yearly salary. Um, and to be fair, when I was permanent, I used to speak to a lot of agency social workers in the local authority that I worked in and they were all like, oh, this is what I'm getting. And I'm sitting there, and I look at what they're doing, and I look at what I'm doing, exactly the same thing. And I thought, am I dumb? I need to use my brain right now. So yeah, so I thought, you know what, I'm out, I'm out. I'm gonna go and do what I need to do. That's the number one positive thing. If money is your priority, and you feel professionally confident, sorry, I go for it. Another thing that's really positive is, you know, you're in control. So if you're working for a local authority that you don't like, or you're working with a manager that you just can't stand, um, or anything like that, you can carry a handbag and leave, literally. You can just give them a week's notice and you're out. Yeah, that's another thing as well. Your The, no the notice period is shorter. That's positive for you um, if you're leaving and you want to leave ASAP, but it's negative for you if you haven't got anything lined up and the local authority is like, you have to leave next week next week literally you have a week they give you a week's notice for to sack you not sack you but to end your contract and you give them a week's notice as well to end the contract so you're kind of in control if you wanted to go on a holiday for six months and travel the world or do something or focus on business and xyz as an agency social worker you can just say okay i'm out next week i'm done um and go do what you want to do and then you can come back to your agency social work career when you want you know you're in control and you feel flexible you don't feel stuck um actually another negative thing is the lack of stability you hear a lot of people say oh i don't want to be an agency social worker because i, I need stability um that's that's like one of the things that they say um and i'm just like for me to be fair i haven't been all my agency um contracts it all says three months rolling that's typically what it is but you can actually be in that same role for even five years. I know people that's been in the same agency role, same local authority for a long period of time, five years, 10 years, and 12 years. I've heard of three people. So mine has been um, a year and a half, no, nearly two years and about six, six months. Another thing, you can kind of like avoid the office politics of an agency social worker. Um, for me, one thing I take advantage of um, is when they have stuff like staff, oh, I don't know, like, I don't know what to call it staff assembly, <laughs> but basically when they gather all the staff around to speak to them about, you know, what's changing and what isn't changing. If you've got things to do, which you will have things to do, because social work just doesn't stop, you can just skip it and no one can really tell you nothing because you're not permanent. They could get rid of you the next day, so it's like you wasted your time listening to all the stuff they wanted to say. But that's actually bad advice, just go to it, just go. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's another thing. But I think, yeah, the fact that it's just flexible, um, 
you're always going to have a job regardless so if you leave today you can start a new job the following day that's how quick it can go like so there's a lot of positives about being an agency social worker and there's a lot of positives about being a permanent social worker but there's also cons so it depends on what you're willing to tolerate what your priorities are and then you can make that to that decision and that's just it guys i'm going to leave the video here i hope this video was helpful and have answered all your questions what i should have done would have should have i should have done a uh, Q&A but I'll probably do a Q&A so that once you've watched this video you probably have questions for me so I'll do a locum social worker versus permanent social worker Q&A and then you can ask all your questions and I'll do a separate video um, to answer all of them. I don't know what I really look like right now because the mirror is quite far away and looking at it and my camera is a bit so I'm really really playing with my hair aren't I I'm so sorry about this guys but Hope you enjoyed um, watching me get ready. I'd say semi get ready because something I did to do off camera. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. See ya.